write news in brief time. Okay, you know, Chew Dog has actually got an old school typewriter, I think. Oh. <laughs> How have you typed that up? Is it an old school typewriter? Or is it you? It's like an X-File from the 70s or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, wrote, he wrote it out on an email. Not yeah. put it in Word, and outside he printed it as it were. All oh, right, cool. Do you, do you want to know why I picked that tune, then? You oh, yeah, it's your, your tune, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Mate, you, you've got to remind me. I'll tell you about my uh, rugby career. I was 10 years old, playing at Unslip Boys Club. Yeah. I only played for about a season. I got an old team photos and all that. That were around club for years. But that were a tune. Beats it national. Do be good to me. Every time after training, after every game, that were a tune that I played over and over again on the jukebox. So that's my rugby memory tune. Jukebox. Right. I'm like that. How old are you, Ch- Chaya? Ten. It's uh, 24 years old, is that record. Th- you 34 now? 34 this year. 34 this year. Getting old, lad. 30, 60. 30, 60, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, it's a great record though it is a, a fantastic record Beats International I've got a really good remix of that that I play down tempo early doors and I like candy pants just down tempo and people walking in yeah people. Yeah, it's like just someone you know when you want to sit and talk to a bird you know what it is not when you're dancing just, no I don't do that yeah. is that a pr- <laughs> Professor Green one <laughs> no not that bell not him no it's really cool I, I got it from a, a French CD I found, I found it on a French CD, this, this wizard sleeve it's called. It's a really, really cool. And it, there's another Peter, Bo- Peter Bjorn and Paul track as well in there. Peter Fun. Bjorn. Peter Bjorn, Bjorn and Paul. It's very cool. Bjorn. Yeah, Bjorn. <laughs> Bjorn. I've got a question for you, Jonesy. Well, What's your favourite sandwich? <laughs> oh, mate, I'm big on cheese at the minute. I love it. I, uh, I can't eat enough cheese and I keep... I know it's pretty bad for you. Like, not bad for you, but there's a lot of fat in it, so I don't like... I like to grate it so there's not too much of it. Yeah. But um, I was starving today. I had to go to a meeting at Edinley and I pinched... Uh, Brett Delaney offered me his cheese and ham sandwich because I, I got there after dinner. So I had to have some treatment. Um, so I'm mad, on, I'm mad on cheese at the minute, Paul. Eddie, what's your favourite sandwich? Today I had it as well. After training, I had a uh, peanut butter, banana, bit of honey on toast. That's, that sounds like a plan. See, you always get things from different people, different places. So I have um, bovril on toast. You like, you like bovril on toast? You heard What's that? It? Oh, Eddie. Bovril. You, you, you are going to live the dream tonight, son. <laughs> Straight after this show, bovril on toast, first time in your life. You either love it or you hate it. It's like Marmite, but it's a bit stronger. It's nice, man. It's a, it's a man's toast. <laughs> Josh, what's your favourite sandwich? Jam. Yes! <laughs> yeah! Old school, council estate. Yeah. In the war, you know what I had today, and I've got. I think it now is my. I had two favourite sandwiches growing up. I had ham, ham Watsits, um, Heinz sandwich spread, and cucumber. Right. I had just had ham and Watsits. Ham Watsits, Heinz sandwich, Heinz sandwich spread is amazing, right? <laughs> and cucumber. That's that. That's the one growing up. <laughs> my my signature sandwich, and now it's got to be fish fingers, tartar sauce, and cucumber. Outstanding. Wow. Had that today. Theo, there's been these fish fingers at most people and me. I see adverts, I'm like, oh, remember them, fish fingers. And I, I, honestly, Theo said to me the other week, oh, let's get some fish fingers, Dad. I thought, hmm, fish fingers, yeah. I had them for a while. And I, since we, since I had some about three weeks ago, I've had about 15 boxes. It's fish like, fish, I've gone fished out of my mind, mate. Fish every day. Like, I've had fish every day for like three weeks. I have a fresh fish or fish fingers. Free. Yeah, man. <laughs> There's a biblical meal for you. I always used to eat fish fingers and, and vinegar when I was poorly. And when you're poorly, you eat certain things, don't you? You have to like buy the luxury because luxury is like medicine, the, the original one. Yeah. Uh, people used to, in the 80s and that, you just think it made you better if you had luxury. Yeah, I, I think uh, everyone does that. I, I used to have, <laughs> before I played like football or cricket or anything, right? I used to have luxury tablets. I used to, I used to eat them. <laughs> yeah, like, I remember drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> used to yeah. Be, I'm going to be better. I'm uh, a better player. They've worked out that Lucas said is what makes you pull it in the first place. You get all the sugar. Hey, you see everyone's like Instagram pictures and you're rough, but yeah. curing. Yeah, curing. Yeah. Lucas said. It, it, it is good on a hangover, though. I think it, it's just a sugar it's hit, really. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you spill it and all, you stick to whatever it's got. <laughs> You're thinking that is the stickiest stuff in the world. It's like glue. But <laughs> you, got, you drink got, it. I've got a serious talking point, right? I had quite an interesting conversation with the guy in the shop this morning. Um, went down and he stood outside smoking away, as he does. And I always got him, picture of Elf, you, aren't you? I said, that's him. He's a bit weighty. And he goes, I'll tell you, man. He says, I'm not, it's not this that kills you. He says, 
He says, people have been smoking and partying, doing drugs and stuff for hundreds of years, right? Hundreds of years. And he says, cancer's bigger now, and he reckons it's because of what we're putting on food. And he says, mark my words, something will come out. He's a bit of a conspiracy theorist, you know, lives in his local shop, watches YouTube all day. It's his shop. And he's quite a funny guy, actually. Really, really dry, really dry guy. And he's just like, he's watching like conspiracy things, but he, he's like mega on this organic, you know, you should eat the organic healthy way because it's pesticides that are causing cancer. What do you reckon, Jonesy? Am I, are you like a man of God? Yeah. What are you thinking? He, he, do you think cancer's man-made? No. No? Definitely not. And um, I'd just like to add the fact that the average life expectancy is higher than it ever has been in history with that. That's why we've got 7 billion people on the planet. That's why we can't move at eight, between 8 and 10 o'clock on the morning and get anywhere. Yeah, but, right. People aren't, listen, people aren't dying any quicker. They're healthier than they've ever been. And I know there's a lot of bad stuff that, like sugar, everybody's banging on about sugar being bad for you. That's fair enough. I, t- I kind of agree with that. But in terms of people living longer and being healthier, there's never been a better time. Uh, you know what? It always makes me laugh, right? When people say we're overcrowded. But whenever you get in an aeroplane, all you see is green. Does that make sense? Mm. I've been doing a lot of flying this year and I've noticed one thing I've noticed is there's more green than there is cities I'd say keep that I like my farm now you, yeah see? I wanted to get onto this this yeah. is a seamless link Josh good work have you got a farm is this true no I've, I've, not, I've not got a farm it's me uh, you've got the tash yeah I've got you've got the, the wellies I've got the you've got the flat cap I've got the, the stick have yeah, you got, got a stick as well now yeah wellies have you yeah, got a sheepdog yet camp, I've got a Hector can, can you go come by ship Let, have you seen uh, my Super League TV thing? No, you need to talk into the mic as well. Sorry. That's uh, right. Yeah. See how much better you sound. Super League TV came up uh, last week uh, and recorded me. And uh, yeah, right at the end. Uh, can you actually farm? Can I? Because uh, Alistair Cook, the England captain, is a farmer yeah. by trade. Yeah, and well, <coughs> it's in my, in my uh, family's background. The Chanley estate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chanley, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had uh, yeah farms, what? My dad used to do it when he was younger, and it's like I say, it's, it's just come across that I never knew my old man used to do it, and yeah, I've just fell in love for it. Uh, fell in love with it. What's your favourite farm animal? I like the lambs, mate. The, the lambs. Yeah, because there's a, a few, like I say, there's a few first time uh, uh, sheep that have uh, lamb this year, and they've give up halfway through and sadly passed away. So the lambs have uh, like been orphans. So oh, you've got to bottle feed them. And, like oh, say, but then you've got to kill them and eat them. That's, mate, that's the worst thing about it. Like you say, you come like connected with a little thing, it follows you about and like then say, you've got it, it is kill. sweet and then you see them next minute on the back of a wagon looking at you thinking, where am I going? Like, you don't Dad, want to Dad, yeah. Dad, Dad, uh, <laughs> bring my bottle back. Yeah. Uh, it's an emotional sleepless day. nights mate that yeah, sleepless nights the I'm too, <laughs> you should come round my house and you'd be like what are you doing in shed into I'm like oh lamb sanctuary <laughs> yeah but yeah I like them yeah it's, it's good like I say it's good to wear, get away from rugby being up there it's quiet it's peaceful like a lot of players have been up past past two weeks I had uh, Lockers and his kids come up and uh, Rads and uh, his little lad came up on Sunday mate I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Theo up and we'll, we'll do something for rugby MTV yeah. And we do when we because we've got. Do you have you heard the news? We're going to be on telly. We've got it. We've got it. We're, we're going big time. Uh, yeah, we can do whatever you want as well as uh, chicken. Is a my mate can put on like uh, archery and yeah, we can have a competition up there. Or something. Oh my god, that'd be awesome! The farm games. Yeah. Awesome. Rolling hair bells and. Oh, you know what we used to do when we were kids? <laughs> this is this is uh, we used to torment the poor farmer. We used to go and nick the hair bells and then. Um, make hair jumps in the, in the thing, and he shot one of us. Yeah, with, with, he got me. I've got a scar on my leg. Um, he's got a few. He shot shot a few of us. Um, so we went, this is how this is how bad this is. <laughs>
Uh, we've, got, we've got to talk about news in brief. That we've got the two dog and uh, tyre spazzing out in corner. Um, <laughs> first point of the day: see your Soliola to leave St. Helens at the end of the season. Who in Oz will be in for him? Can he, see, I'm reading it like it's typed. Uh, can he stay in Super League? Be considered a successful one or successful one? Or one word. We'll start with the NRL god that was in, in the house. See you, Soyola. Who's he going to go to in Australia? Don't know. No, but you, you know. Now, do you, obviously, you might have heard, but um, do, will he be a, a success over there? As big as he's been over here. And has he been successful over here, Jonesy? Oh, he's been unreal, mate. Um, my ribs and all that, he's been unreal. He smashed me a few times. And uh, do you know what? It's funny, when, uh, when Josh was talking about players... Um, that he's played against who have troubled him. Like I, Soliola is probably at the minute he's put, and Manu as well, both at the moment in St Helens, probably the hardest two back rows to deal with. They're a right handful. Uh, I think he's been fantastic over here. He's got a great try again for Saints this week. I think they'll miss him. Uh, they'll be good that he's going back. But I, you know, I listen to people like Kali Lulai talking about um, you know, going back yeah. home when he's finished playing and, and what he's going to do afterwards. And I wanted to ask Eddie, um, when you go back home, will you go back to New Zealand? And what is it about the New Zealand lifestyle? Like, you know, Josh is on about farming. People over there seem a lot more um, earthly, you know, a lot more like farming, getting in the water, spear fishing, all that kind of thing. Do, do you miss them home with things? Yeah, more, um, you know, for Islanders, it's more just the culture and just the tradition that we live in. Um, you know, we've got a big family and um, we're all pretty pretty tight as well. And, you know, we have, you know, we get our pigs at, at the back and, you know, we have a barbecue, we get the guitar out, start singing. So that's probably what I miss about, um, about home is, you know, the family and just being around them and just, you know, singing songs and having a few beers there. I love it, mate. I love that culture. I'd love to be a farmer over here because that's as close as you're ever going to get it. But um, in terms of Soliola, is that, I don't know if you've met him, if you know him. I've not really met him personally. But is that the type of bloke that he is? Will, it, will he be uh, one of those guys that might probably go on? Yeah, um, you know, I've grown up with um, C.S. Soliola. I went to school with him and um, you know, I've played against him a few times. And, you know, he's, he's one of the toughest um, forwards that I've played against as well. And, um, you know, he's, he's played in the NRL. Uh, he's been there for a while and, you know, and he's coming to the Super League and, He's done well here, and um, you know, if he, I'm definitely, definitely, he'll find a club over there, and I know he'll settle in well with his family and going back home to his mum and dad, and also to his big family as well. Absolutely, Simo, distracted over there. Just uh, private chat, me and Josh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Talking about farms. Um, talking about farming. Um, you get. I'm looking. At, you know, I'm just looking. Talking about what you're going to do with this shed. Um, well, it's not shed, it's a, it's, a, it's a top place, but I reckon you get, I've got chickens, I reckon you get 30, 40 chickens in here. I don't fancy, I don't <laughs> fancy a, a shed full of chickens, but I do like an egg in the morning. Turn the monitor down a little bit, it's feeding back. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, I, I've decided what we're going to do with the shed, it's going to be a rave cave. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's, that is, that's going to be. Can I come to the opening partner? Yeah, mate, what, what we're going to do is, as you can see now, the records are here. So, we've got two big shelves of records. All under there, Eddie, is vinyl. That's my babies, they're my life. So, they're going to come down, to right down to the back. So, it'll be like, I'm going to put, um, a fo imagine that full strip there is going to have like a flashing lights on it. Yeah? But they're facing that way. So, the records will come down to the back. In the middle will be the, the decks. So, down here will just be records, records, decks, looking out. And I reckon I get 40 people in there. For in here? Forget, forget chickens. Yeah, it's crammed in, mate. It'd be amazing what you can get in a little space. Salmon dancing. Then we've got the we've got the veranda. We've got the DC two <laughs> outside, and um, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a rave cave. Yeah, put some uh, cargo netting up. It'd be like putting uh, a great day in a chicken gento. It's gonna go, it's gonna go off, mate. Yeah. And what's that film? What's that film with Terry Crews when he's giving it with glow sticks, at white chicks, something like that? Yeah. That's what I'm getting visions of you. <laughs> and you're not a rave cave. <laughs> 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 All sweating up a storm. Yeah, it, it was sweating up a storm, definitely. So, see you, Soliola. He's, um, he'll be a success wherever he goes, won't he? Yeah, without a doubt, mate. Um, Four Nations said you will announce how will England fare. England versus Fiji or Samoa. Australia versus New Zealand. Da -da 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 -da, so on, so on. Yeah. And that's in uh, the Sun, Sun Corp in Brisbane. In um, Wanga... Where is that, Eddie? Wanga Hallery? What's Vangarai. that? Wangarai. 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 Uh, Melbourne and uh, not in Sydney I see no Sydney oh, it's all over that that side of Australia how, how are England going to get on Josh 
Yeah, we've uh, prepared well for the past say two, three years. Uh, so yeah, it's looking well for us. There's a lot of young uh, kids coming through now. So, do you reckon it's time now to move with the kids for England? I don't know. So you need them uh, old reds in Be there. Be nice to, to Jonesy. You need them old <laughs> reds in there. To, they say you need experience in the camp. Uh, they've been through it. So yeah, it's it's good to have the old heads in there and. Yeah, with the young lads as well, they say you, you need that enthusiasm as well, that I try and try to bring. Well, we all know what happens on tour, stays on tour, so it's good good to get in a way day with all the boys. Um, who do you, who, who's, the, who's the current young players, John Z, in Super League, coming through? Who you, if you had to say one player who's, who's looking like they could be England material for this tour, who, who, who would you put your money on? Um, I'm I'm not sure. I think it's a bit early doors, but I certainly with you know teams like Cass, um, doing so well. You know, Widnes and, and all these. Usually, you know, you've got your Leeds, St. Helens, Wiggins. Uh, they pretty much dominate the size, but I think we'll see a few new faces this year, and, and rightly so. That's what you've got to do. We've got to keep it alive. I I, I think that the ETS squad, like Josh said, was brilliant the last two or three years, and it gave opportunity for people like myself to meet people like Josh and other lads and get to know them. And you know, when you get on that pitch, there you're fighting for each other. I, I don't know if they're doing that anymore, which is a, a bit of a shame if they're not. Um, I know they're still getting together a little bit, but. Uh, you know, that that past three years, one of the best times of my, of my life, really, in terms of my rugby league career. Um, you know, the times that I had with that England. And it's funny, you know, you just mentioned there uh, about England having a schedule. I think what's more important is that we carry on building for this World Cup. And I don't know if teams like America, for example, have got a, a schedule or if they've got any more games in the pipeline. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. They only had the one-off game in Hawaii, and uh, it's a bit hard, you know. It's not a bad game to have, though, is it? That one-off <laughs> game in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, but. Like players like the NRO and the Super League can't really play it because it's you know it's during the season. I think you need to put your foot down, Eddie, for that one, mate. <laughs> I asked when you need to say, look, my country means everything to me, the world. <laughs> Get away for holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously the Fijian game or the Samoa will come from a presumably a round robin type uh, yeah. competition. We had the, the European stuff. USA should be incorporated in that as well, I think. You know, and maybe an Italian team or something like well, that. I, I've said all along we should we should be having an, alongside these four nations, we should be having an emerging nations contest, probably in in Australia where most of the lads play, or in 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 the in the Europe anyway. So you've got Poland, you've got Russia, Italy. Trent Barrett's the new Italy coach as well. Got to say congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Trent Barrett's uh, taking the job there. Got a text off uh, Reno, the, the Italian manager, because I got quite friendly with all the Italian boys, saying, oh, mention it on the show, mention it on the show. We can, can we do an interview and get him on the show? I said, yeah, of course. So he's going to record us an interview. Uh, big big Trent. Um, but I think, you know, th- those they've got a really good like base. Obviously, they had the, they've got the glamour stars, your minis and stuff, but... Um, if you can get Campese playing, I know he wasn't allowed to play this year because they had a new coach at Canberra. I think Ricky Stewart and he says, nah, you're not playing. I want you fresh for the new season. You're too important. But if they'd have had Campese playing, they missed a, you know, a half. So they they could, in theory, have a really good side, the Italians, with people like Ant- Antonella Franchi and people like, you know, Tedesco's killing it this year for, for West Tigers. So, you know, I, I think that it's a priority for the game, the world body, the whatever they are in the world. Don't know what the world body's called. I don't think it's NRL and NRFL. That's that's it. It. Well, I, think, it? I think they need to probably look at a separate body just to make sure that everyone's getting a fair crack. Because, like, like we say about London, having some, you know, <coughs> some options for rugby league. <laughs> same for countries as well. You know what I mean? Exactly the same. Definitely. Hawaii, more games in Hawaii, Freddie. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Bang that drum. <laughs> right, other news. Brett Ferris, five-game ban and public statement with Huddersfield's poor form living outside the top eight. Could this latest setback be curtains for Huddersfield's hopes of mounting a charge for Old Trafford? Don't write, say, uh, don't write Huddersfield off, not for a million nah. years. It's too good, too many good players. They're going through a bad patch, but once they get their head round it, uh, you know, they'll come out probably the other side of Easter. Um, all right. I think Brett Ferris um, probably um, couldn't have been a worse timing after yeah, the that's Alex it. McKinnon thing. Hundred you know percent. I mean, that's poor it. guy. You know, in, in in Australia, you know, is it he's such a good bloke? Uh, if you were spoke to a few lads and they said, honestly, he's one of characters. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, the Newcastle team and he's he's, he's on footy show and that. He's a bit of a personality and he's always got good banter. And it's just so sad, isn't it? I don't know if there's any news yet. I haven't been really following the story because um, I said it was a bit too early to tell a couple of weeks ago. But I, I, I'm sure that it'll be there'll be news on Footy Show this week when we tune in. But 
Yeah, Brett couldn't have picked a worse moment, really, to uh, suplex someone. Yeah, it was a bit reckless, wasn't it? it was, I, I must admit, when I heard it on radio, um, and I imagined what it would have been like, and then when I saw it, it was nothing like what I thought it was going to be. I didn't think it was that bad when I first no, saw it. it I, I saw the actual tackle as it happened. I didn't think it were all that. I think it looked a lot worse on replay. What do you reckon, Eddie? Yeah, I remember watching the game as well, and uh, yeah, it looked pretty. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a wrestling move. There. <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah, it was pretty dangerous eh? for the game as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is all well, the the is, is the game turning soft though? I know I know we shouldn't be wrestle, doing wrestling and stuff, but you know, banging the shoulder now this concussion rule is it is it is the game going soft? I know there's a few decisions where you run in a, a block, and uh, let's say if you get through, the ball's already gone. I know we had a couple of tries. Past over the past few weeks, we've been disallowed because we've run a block and they've like literally just they've come into us and it's charted it off. And it's getting what, ex- explain it. It's, I don't so a block. I think you mean a, you've got that runner coming yeah. through, man out the back, yeah. and that runner when he takes one of the defenders out or you, gets you, in his way. Your, your players that you put on a quality Wigan. That's what I've noticed. You know, when you watch the ball goes out so quick, they've got runners everywhere. Well, I think the, I mean you're more than me, but I think I described one of Saints' players as a Wigan style player because Wigan are the best at it. The, the, you've been doing it for years, and even though you sort of know what you're going to do, you know, knowing what you're going to do and defending it are two different things because they do it that well. Yeah. So you do a lot of them blocks as you call them, don't you? Like three of them on a row, and then Matty Bowen, you did it in deep in your own half actually. I think you adjusted really quick, really a bit late, got there for the first one, and out the back, out the back. Matty Bowen goes inside the centre, and um, you know we're gonna so good at it. It's uh, it's unbelievable. He, he's pr- he practiced that for years, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. It's been like I say, it's been in the, the system for quite a while, and all the boys know everything about it now. So you know in, ins and outs and where to go. So yeah, it's like say, second nature now. Yeah. You just you just pick up the uh, tries on end of it, one handed. Well, not me, it's uh, Joe Burgess. Joe Burgess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, um, right. Gambling in rugby. Aiden Fal Fahal Fal Fal Fal. Aiden Fal and Johnny Campbell uh, have their bans for betting reduced. With a checker passed in, betting should rugby league do as football are trying to do: introduce a blanket ban on betting on rugby. A league at any level. What are the implications? Does it have uh, the possibility to seriously damage the sport, or should it be left alone and treated as just a bit of fun? Everyone likes a bet. Go on, Josh. What do you think, Paul? I'm not a big uh, gambling fan. Like I said, I don't bet on a lot of things. I only bet on like the horse race and what's been on the past week, and probably a football bet. Yeah. But I don't put a lot on. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's. I don't know. It's, people can't. Like you said the footballers are saying they can't bet on football, in it. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's, uh, unless I'm putting like, like I've got a mate. You know, I've got a mate. We know him, Jonesy. I won't mention him on the radio, but he stakes like three, five grand on games. He's not to do with sport, and it's not. It's not actually rugby league. It's football. Yeah. But it's like he puts like five grand on a on a certainty, and he comes out with like five and a half or six and a half. You know what I mean? He, he might win a grand, but he's putting big stakes on, and it's like. You know, I'm always like, ah, what if you lose? What if you lose? And he says, yeah, I do every now and again. But it's like... They don't tell you, though, do they? They don't tell you. Oh, they tell you when they're winning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, it, I suppose it... I, I don't see it harming at me. That was... That was t- t- you know Terry McDermott from Newcastle? When he, he was Kevin Keegan's assistant? That was his main job, putting bet, 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 bets on for boys. So, it's like... That's all it's going to be, though. If it gets banned, they're just going to say, oh, get the missus or the mates to put it on, aren't they? Yeah, but it's, exactly. It's just like... I don't see how you can stop it, really, to be honest. I don't see it as a problem. Do, do you think, Jones, is it a problem? Eddie, do you think it's a problem? Oh, well, you know, back home in the NRL, you'll know, be, um, you get a massive fine if, you, if you're doing it over there, but... Is it? Yeah. It's, it's serious? Yeah, it's serious fine. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's wrong with betting, but um, yeah, that's probably the way it is, eh? Jonesy? Mate, do you know when uh, government bans smoking over in England, public places, it was the best thing the government's ever done in my lifetime. Uh, and I was biased because I'm not a smoker, but there's a lot of smokers who are upset by it. Now, there'll be people who do bet that I'll be upset by that if they banned it. But for me, I don't bet, so they can ban it for me 100%. And I sat down and thought about this, right? And to be fair, there's no benefit whatsoever for the sport uh, other than the danger of people 
betting either in rugby league and coming across like the, they've got you know coming across dodgy when when rugby league players bet on rugby league it, it's not right because they get inside information and 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 you know more than the other people do so you shouldn't probably be allowed to bet on on rugby league you know if you want to bet on other sports you know horses well, grand national last week um, football or whatever to make it interesting if there's a game on and you don't really support either teams that's fair enough um, but gambling's never really interested me and I, I just think we get no benefit whatsoever out of benefit uh, out of betting on I believe so. They can ban it for me completely. The bucky always wins anyway. So 100. percent There's only ever one winner, Simo. It's the bucky. It's the bucky Kukash. <laughs> right, it's game time. Try me. No, it's not game time. I'll be getting to one thing. It's a tune. Right, should, what, who's tuner playing? Jones's. Jones's. Jones's tune. All right, Jones's tune. Which one? <laughs> your uh, your old school one. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> 